doing very, very, very well. Tonight we are going to be exploring this volume of Good Housekeeping 1908. I love these red leather um, bits on the binding and then the gold lettering is very pretty. We looked through it a little bit in my last video, but uh, I thought it could be really fun to explore it some more. I'm going to be doing a mixture of soft speaking and also whispering. So earlier today, I perused it briefly uh, just to pick out which pages looked most promising. A lot of it is uh, heavy text-wise. It's super interesting stuff, but if we went through all of it, it would just take too, too, too long. So instead, I've marked a lot of like imagery and little poetry. fashion illustrations, things that are kind of more quick and exciting. So, we begin with the cover for January. It's a lovely shade of orange. Most of the covers are black, white, and gray with one bright accent color probably because, you know, the more colors you use, the more expensive it gets so you've got this mother who's giving her baby a wash she's got the sponge in the water and there's her little babe in her nightgown So, oh, January. An advertisement for shredded whole wheat does not sound too appetizing, but they sure do make their case. We looked over this in the last video. I thought it was really sweet. So the first page that, that I've got marked here is a poem called The Princess Goes to Ride. The Princess Goes to Ride by Margaret Beecher, illustrated by F. Stockman. The little princess went to ride. On a terrible dragon, high and wide. But she slipped about from side to side, for she'd never learned to ride astride. So, when the dragon reached his lair and turned to eat her, she wasn't there. The little princess went for a sail on the back of a pointed and slippery whale, but his head grew so small as it got toward his tail that she slid off behind in his long white trail. So the whale sailed on in spray and in foam, and the little princess hurried home. So since she couldn't fall over and couldn't tip out, I think she is living there still, no doubt. F. Strothman did a wonderful job with these illustrations. I love the way the 
you saw it, there's a bunny rabbit and mushrooms. Lovely princess before she slipped. And there she is. There she is nestled in the moon. We've got these gorgeous Art Nouveau style fancy first letters. Always makes me think of that essay episode of SpongeBob. Okay, so here we have some recommendations for Easter souvenirs. Very much 1908 Pinterest. These are both uh, unsettling to me. <laughs> Dolls' heads of artistically painted eggshells, like so lopsided and sinister, but cute, cute. Endearingly, endearingly scary, I think. This Easter candle holder is easily made. <laughs> oh my god. Just like this pile of broken eggs. Okay, this made me laugh, so milk news, first of all. And then here's this sketch of a cat drinking from a milk jug. And it's captioned, when puss becomes a menace to the family. And then above it, it says that there is nothing imaginary about this sketch. I witnessed this very thing recently. something they witnessed in somebody else's household. They're writing in to be shady. Be cherry colored kitten. Barbara sat on the front steps playing with a big stuffed cat that Auntie Grace had given her on her birthday. Pretty soon she heard the gate slam and saw Uncle Bob coming up the walk. Hello Barbara. Why don't you have a truly kitten that will say meow and play with its tail instead of that old calico thing? I love my kitty, said Barbara, and hugged it tighter than ever. We've got three little kitties at our house. A white one, a yellow one, and a cherry colored one. Don't you want one? Yes, please, answered Barbara politely. Well then, what color would you like best? asked Uncle Bob. White, yellow, or cherry colored? Cherry colored, I guess, answered Barbara. And Uncle Bob went whistling down the street. When Barbara went into the house, she asked her mother what color cherry color was. And her mother said that it was a very pretty shade of deep pink. So Barbara thought she was going to have a pink cat. to show them the wonderful kitten as soon as it came. One day, Uncle Bob came running up the steps and asked Barbara what she supposed he had in his pocket. Oh, I know, my kitten, said Barbara. And sure enough, he put his hand in his pocket and pulled out a dear little black kitten. That isn't mine, said Barbara. Mine is a pink kitten, you said so. No, indeed, I said cherry-colored, laughed Uncle Bob. All cherries aren't the same color. Some of them are black, just like the kitten. At first, Barbara was so disappointed that she did not want the kitten at all. But it was such a dear little thing that she soon began to love it. She carried it into her mother and told her the whole story. Child look like Marie Antoinette. Oh 
columns about different things, cooking, relationships, furnishings. I really liked the ones about home decor. So this person wrote in about an antidote for green green. Question. We have our front room in our small in golden oak and lately had it papered in green but the green is so green that my husband says we'll be living through St. Patrick's Day the whole year round he is Irish so ought not to mind it but I do just when I was feeling worst I had an inspiration that you might help me can you? Mrs. A.B.M. Answer I think you can easily change the nationality of your room. In looking over my dress in New York yesterday, I came upon one in green with a large brown conventionalized rose design in it. If you get curtains of it, it would attract the attention away from the green, while at the same time it would mellow and warm the light as it came through the window, and so soften the green of the walls. Sharp colors can often be successfully I don't think I actually understand what the advice is saying, <laughs> but it's worded nicely. A kind of color antidote. A rose design. Hmm. Here's the cover for February 1908. Got some more colors in this one. This little lady with her arms up over her head, tying her hair in an updo. She's looking in the mirror. Got a white dress with three buttons down the back. And on her vanity, there's a hairbrush jug. sample bottle and booklet. Here we've got another another poem about the moon.
I would follow you way away behind the world. All the sun set there. Little moon, little moon, sharp and silvery. Where were you the whole day long? Dear, what did you see? Fairy fields and palaces, queens with golden hair. flipping through this, it was really interesting to read about, you know, the general opinions of 1908 about the roles of men and women, but I don't, I don't know if it would be that relaxing. <laughs> a lot of it was a bit frustrating to hear about. Just a lot of like um, desperately trying to convince women. Oh, you may think that you want to do the things that men do and go the places that men go and say that the sorts of things that men can say, but you're being delusional and here is what you actually want. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being a housewife, I think that all of these, this information is fascinating and these skills are so impressive. It just only becomes a problem when it's the only thing you're allowed to do. And wanting to do anything other than that is deemed like mental illness. Just no good. Gorgeous, gorgeous nightgowns. I love these. It's really impressive how uh, just with black and white they're able to convey such shininess and silkiness of the fabric. And then this little girl, I love how she looks. It's great how this little girl looks so prim and proper. Fancy, dressed to the nines. And then she's just holding a stick. that the ideal, the ideal female silhouette used to be a little bit more masculine. Like, this reminds me of how for men the Dorito-shaped, the Dorito-shaped torso is ideal. Whereas these days, you know, you, you can see her upper body is, appears more, oh, it's wider than her lower body and it's not that way now. Now it's hourglass or even distracted by the reading and I forget forget to trace these lovely little things. I love tracing. I just wish I could remember to do it more often. April, April. On the roof of some city house. We've got a knocked over watering pail, an explosion of flowers, and then this child has plucked, plucked a flower and is now gazing upwards, admiring a bird soaring through the sky. Good housekeeping.
neighbor's garden, my own and a dream one. I have always loved flowers, the wild ones tossing up their bright heads in the fields, and woods I have gathered at will and filled my house with, but toward the exquisite darlings which bloom in gardens, I have felt as I do the precious jewels which I see set out in a shop on the person of some fortunate lady. They are things I love to look at, but do not own. At least, I have only a few bits of fine jewelry, just as I have only a few flowers I can call my very own. Referring to jewelry on a person as being a blaze, a blaze on a person. works well. I like it, I like it, I like it. Though I have never desired to possess jewels, I have positively hungered for a garden of flowers. I have spent sleepless nights in which I plan to have one all my own and have gone to sleep to dream of it. Since I came to America, however, I've been a dweller until recently in the big grimy cities where the ugly buildings and noises made It is not always the ones who live among the flowers that love them most. The city child, a child of the slums sometimes, with its one pot of geraniums, will often expend upon it more care and thought than some women give to the flowers which seem literally to garland their home inside and out. I often think of my mother and her pathetic attempts to recall the bloom of the flowering land of Japan which had been her home. The first time she made the long journey to this country, she carried with her a dozen or more boxes in which seeds and seeds and slips were planted. And even at sea, she had her little green growth always with her. Here in America, she was never without her own bit of a garden, her flowering spot, as she named it, and often it consisted magazine is teaching women how to metal work. Like, that just feels like something that, I don't know, would maybe be sort of seen as too dangerous. It's not very dainty. It feels sort of more like men's work. What they could see it as men's work at the time. Three styles of paper knives etched, stamped, and pierced. But here we have the set of equipment needed for sheet metal work. Practical knowledge of how to cut, hammer, bend, and pierce metal would enable the craftswoman to construct many things for her own convenience and to stop a few weeks in the household purse. So it's both for like practical repairs and decorative items like these engraved book stands, letter opener, candle holder. I'm not sure what that one is. Round candle shape to be pierced and lined with silk. Square candle shape partly stamped. Etching so she composed of one part to each nitric acid. And sulfuric acid to three of water. Put this solution in a glass jar and keep it covered as the beams are very irritating. Always, always adore, always adore the fashion illustration. This one is Afternoon Costume of French Petite Patterns 10 cents each And ordering be sure to state a size wanted So she's got these gloves and hat And it is a 
always like to pick which one I would wear if I was from the time when it's between a few. I think this one is for my style. The lace. I like the buttons. I like the buttons up the sharply tailored. That one looks very bleedy. The maritime house. So sketch for fireplace side of living room. And it's a design for a home, but it's it's inspired by a ship. Profile of beam and ship in the section of beam. Note the suggestion of the stern of a ship of the fifteenth century and the detail of the mantled fireplace. You can see these pieces of the roof are very ship like. Yeah, just So they save all of the advertisements for the end, pretty much. I think there's maybe on the back of each cover for each month, there's one ad, but then there's a big chunk of advertisements saved for last. So there's one for Pianola. You cannot draw the line too sharply. Bean power. <laughs> so if you eat you eat the Snyder process pork and beans, you'll be a mighty, mighty sports player, mighty athlete like this strapping young fellow here. Bean power. Correct. Social. Linen lawn is beautiful, fine, well made. It has an excellent writing service. In addition, it has that indefinable something called a style or distinction, which has made it a popular fabric surface writing paper for ten years. Highland linen. Certain writing papers, Highland linen. It's favorite through flavor, crisp and delicious. Mm -hmm. 
Go National Biscuit Company. Charm him with the Bisco. Please her with the Bisco. Delight and entertain everyone with the Bisco sugar wafers. They take the place of sweets and candies. Blend harmoniously with ices and desserts. And 10 cent tins. Also in 25 cent tins. Singer talks to thinking women. Delicious white mountain dessert for every day in the week. Sunday, Harlequin ice cream. Monday, frozen souffle. Tuesday, duty fruity ice cream. Friday, apricot ice cream. Saturday, nut ice cream. Is this beer? Oh, a non intoxicant sparkling, highly concentrated liquid extract of malt and all the sun ice cream. So I guess. Thus, this famous liquid food is no artificial compound, but comes direct from nature's laboratory. Hence, it feeds and builds up the human frame and relates the sacred fibers of health in those with its young bodies. The spark of life burns dim and low. Order a case from your druggist or grocer. Have it delivered it today. What is sewing machine? is going to do it for tonight's peruse through this collection of good housekeeping. Obviously we only went through a small fraction of the pages in this, so please let me know if you'd be interested in exploring more of this edition. so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun looking through this. And I'd love to spend some more time on it. 